And let's move over to the whiteboard. And everybody should be able to see the whiteboard. Make sure y'all turn on. Oh. Yes. What? I got to where it's supposed to be. Something wrong? Oh, do I need to present? Well, Can y'all see the screen? We can. No. I might have not have presented. Hold on. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, Mr. Barnes, just come in whenever. That's fine. All right, now see if that brings in the presentation. I can't see it. It I should take it. one second or two. There it is. There it is, finally. Make sure you all turn easily oh. in Pendleton. Make sure you turn that board on so it'll show on that other board. There. There, there we go. You see the icon at the bottom with the red circle? Uh, see there we go. This one out to its own little window. See if you can click the accept meeting yeah. content. Yeah, accept <laughs> content and turn on the boards so y'all yeah. can see the you can move it over to the big board and Pendleton that's to your left and easily I think the big board is to your right. That's right. Turn it on and that way you can see it. Now Go to the first section picture on the bottom. Everybody see click it? That arrow. Yeah, the arrow. And then now you can move it to the other side. Y'all let me know when y'all got everything done. Miss Gusmus, I appreciate you trying to get it all done. You're welcome. Why is it not? Okay. There we go. Got it? And you can move it over to the other screen if it's on. All right. So, the difference quotient. That's basically the first part. The difference quotient and slope with algebra. We covered a little bit of that the other day. I'm going to put the whiteboard up in a minute, and we're going to do a couple of questions with the difference quotient um, and the slope with algebra. So if you're talking about 1.1, you're talking about slope. 1.1. Slope with algebra, meaning the slope, point-slope equation, the... Uh, Calculate the slope. We went over that last week. And then I was getting a little bit into the difference quotient with the limit theory, but we're going to cover the difference quotient today. And then this is 1.2, I think. This area right here is 1.2. And then 1.3 is on the second one. We'll get to that in just a minute. So let me move over and do a question with the... Let's go with f of x is equal to x squared or x plus 1. We'll go with something real. So x squared plus 1. Okay? And I want you to put that into the difference quotient. And the difference quotient basically says m is equal to x plus h f of x plus h minus f of x over what? H. H. So I want you to go ahead and do that. And this is, again, a review of algebra. So that means you're going to rewrite. And I'm going to take a blue marker, and I'm going to rewrite this function with a big set of parentheses. So parentheses squared plus 1, and I'm going to put a bracket there, minus, and I'm going to put the second part in red, that's f of x, all over h. Okay, now for those of y'all that remember your college algebra, what are we going to plug into that blue set of parentheses? X plus H. X plus well, H. H. And of course, that's going to give you shortcut number one. And then over here, we're just going to rewrite f of x, which is x squared plus one. Now, you're relying 100% on your algebra. So go ahead and do it. Go 
And when we get to chapter 2 and we start doing the limits, we're going to put the limits into the slope and we're going to get the derivative, which is your first calculus. Okay, what is shortcut number one? A plus B quantity squared is equal to what? X squared. X squared. X squared plus 2XH plus H squared. Thank you. I'm impressed. Plus one. <coughs> minus. I'm going to put that minus in there. That minus goes with the minus here, and it's going to make this minus. And that's going to be a x squared and a 1, all that over h. And what happens to the x squareds? It cancels. This is going to happen a lot. Anything that's a non-h item probably is going to cancel. And the 1s cancel. And that leaves you with a stylus writing crazy and 2xh plus h squared over h. I have no idea. Battery's going to it. This one's a little bit better. So, your final answer, if I can write it any better, is 2xh plus h squared over h. And of course, that's the algebra. So, in chapter 2, we're going to take that limit, we're going to combine it with this right here, and we're going to produce what's the first thing in calculus that you need to learn, and that is the derivative. Question there. Can you not take um, h off the bottom? It's not yet. Okay. That's when you do the limit. Because what will happen is, as the you're, oh, you're going to factor out the h, yes. But we're, we'll get to that later. Okay? You're going to factor out the h, and then you're going to say h is approaching 0, and that's going to leave 2x and the derivative of h, x squared is 2x. But we'll get to that later. Right now I'm just sticking with the, what he just said about the h. You can factor h out on the top. 2x plus h over h, and then the h is cancel, and you can do that. So the final answer is either that one or depending on if they say simplify, 2x plus h. All right, so that is difference quotient. Should you it's already know how to do that? Yes. On a scale from 1 to 10, about a 9, you should know how to do that. Question. Okay. Is the 2x plus h is the derivative? No. The 2x plus h is the, is the, now why did, see, see what happened? How am I supposed to? Okay, I'm sorry. The 2x plus h is the algebraic solution. Okay. The derivative is when you apply the limit theory to the algebraic solution. Right now, y'all don't know the limit theory yet. You see what I'm saying? So 2x plus h is not the derivative. It is the algebraic equation for the slope of the tangent line. But that h, we're going to get rid of it when we do the limit. Everybody with me? Did that answer your question? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So the next thing that we're going to need to review over 
is odd and even. Odd and even, and write that down, an even function, f of negative x is equal to f of x. For all x in the domain, that means you plug in a negative x and see what you get, and if it's equal, then you have an even function. An even function means it's symmetrical around the what? The y-axis. What what's an example of something that is symmetrical around the y-axis? Parabola. 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 So that is an even function. Something that is around the origin would be like a cubic function. Remember, your ending behavior for a even function is both directions going the same way. Now, this is all college algebra stuff. What is the ending behavior for a odd function? Opposite ways. Opposite directions. Remember that. We're also going over a review of your vertical and horizontal shifts. The yellow, and we went over this. A lot of people say, when did we go over this? When we did completing the square. Remember, what did I say about completing the square the way that I show you? It covers about how many sections? Four or five different sections. What does it cover? It covers vertical, horizontal shifts. It covers vertex. It covers x-intercepts. It covers uh, solving an equation. It covers domain. It covers range. It covers line of symmetry. It covers orientation. So when you, so when we did those, how many problems did we do? Five or six? When we did those five or six completing the square problems, you should be able to take away from that those five or six equations, four or five of these sections that basically they're reviewing you on. And this is one of the reviews. Your K is your vertical shift. If it's positive, it's what? Up. If it's negative, it's what? Down. Your horizontal shift. If it's positive, it's left. If it's negative, it's what? Right. This is the only time it's the opposite. Remember me telling you, take the opposite. Okay? A is your orientation. If it's negative, in, in case of a parabola, if it's negative, it goes what? It's opening down. And if it's positive, it's opening what? Up. If it is between 0 and 1, what does that tell you? That tells you it's wide. What if it's between, what if it's above 1? That means it's narrow. All of these things, completing the square tells you. So pretty much section 1.2, when they talk about horizontal and vertical shifts, you should be able to get that from completing the square or looking at a graph. Question on that? I think one of Miss, I think Miss uh, Iyabi's question or Miss uh, Wilson's question is on a vertical and horizontal shift of absolute value. We'll go over that in just a minute. Now, if you had me for a college algebra instructor, I gave you a whole page of the parent graphs. What are the parent graphs? Well, a squared function is a parabola. What's a cubic function? A cubic function is a curve. What's a absolute value? Absolute vodka. It's a V. Okay, what is a square root? It's a swoosh. What is a 1 over x? 1 over x is a half a volcano. What's a 1 over x squared? A whole volcano. All right, so you should have those in your college algebra notebook. All right, that's what's taught in college algebra. So all of these functions, you should know what they look like. Always remember, if the h is connected to the x, that's a horizontal shift. It's within these parentheses. It's within these parentheses. <clears throat> but if the number is outside the parentheses, 
are outside the function, then it is a what? A vertical shift. Vertical shift. That's a lot of times, a lot of times people, I'll give you this. F of X is equal to 1 over X plus 5. And somebody will tell me that the horizontal shift is 5 to the left. And that is incorrect. The X has, the number has to be attached to the X or to the function for it to be the horizontal shift. So if you wanted a vertical shift of 5, I mean a horizontal shift of 5 to the right, it would be, and there is 5 to the right and 5 up. So you've got to review all of that. Again, that's why we went over completing the square, so you could do that review. So that takes care of 1.2 and 1.1. In the homework, there was another value. It was a value that was next to x, like inside, like times x. That's the a. That's the orientation. No, it, it was a different value, actually. I can just probably send you a question real fast. Send me the question. If you got it on your laptop, send it to me. Who's, who asked that? It's me, Shiloh. Okay, if you could send it to me right quick, and I'll see what that looks like. I think it was the horizontal stretch or compression is what she's talking about. Yeah, that's, what yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's the orientation. That's why you have to factor it out when you're doing the uh, completing the square. Uh, Chelsea, what just happened? Somebody tell me what's making that thing do that. I think it might be because you have, you have the application too close to the top of the screen. Well, that's because they shouldn't have the daggum. Okay, now they're gone. Where did they go? In the homework. Hold on a second, y'all. I've got to reinvent the wheel here. Hold on. But keep the bar. I'm going to try to keep it lower. See, that's why this thing needs to be side by side. I never had this problem until they did this vertical crap. Damn Russians. Bernie's going to take care of us all. Did y'all see where that uh, that uh, guy, at, at that alumni of Morehouse, is it Morehouse College? Yeah. The billionaire. You see what he did? Back. He's going to pay everybody yeah, his student loan. Isn't that great? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I'm supposed, to be, I'm supposed to be mad. I'm supposed to be jealous. <laughs> now, I think that's a great thing that he's doing. Still doing it. I don't know why he's doing it. Hold on a second. I'm still fixing. I fixed it, and then it went back. The reason I have to keep this is so I can see y'all, especially the Anderson, the Pendleton, and the Easley campus. Easley, I think two of y'all's done quit on me. Two uh -huh. of you's there, two of you's not. I'm uh -huh. here. I'm on Skype. Uh, I haven't okay, quit yeah, that's right. That's right. You're, yeah, okay. All right. Uh, thank you. All right, I'll idea. shut up. Uh, now, uh, yeah. did you send me that question, Miss uh, Yabi? I'm looking for it. The textbook uses um, four numbers A, B, C, and D. Only letters. A, B, C, and D? I've never seen D before. What page you on? I'm pulling it up. Hold on a second. I want to get one thing done first. Miss Yabi, tell me what page you're on when you find it. Yes, sir. What was your question? Um, when you're doing uh, functions that the x is inside of a square root, uh -huh. and you're trying to find the difference quotient, um, how does it group when okay. you do? We'll do that in just a second. Thank you for asking that. Next time, send me a question. If you get one, send it on. Uh, we're fixing to do these in just a second. Okay, the question was asked about the square root and doing, I'll just, you keep looking, Miss Yabi, and I'll just go to the whiteboard and we'll, we'll just do another difference quotient. Hold on a second. Let me pull that up. I have a question uh, like he's talking about pulled up right now. Do you want me to send it to you? Yes, please. Okay. I'm giving up on that. I'm giving up on it. It's, it keeps switching and I get tired of fixing it. So let me go to my handy dandy trends. What do you call that when you see through a transparent? Let me get rid of the calculator and go to my email. 
Golly, signed us out. What a surprise. And 140. Thank you, Miss Rowland. No problem. Is this what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. All right. First thing you do is you rewrite. Take the blue and you rewrite this right here with the square root. You rewrite that with parentheses squared plus 20. And then you do minus bracket square root of x squared plus 20. Now, one other thing you might want to think about doing is rewriting it. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to look at it in just a second to see if we need to rewrite it. But all that over H. I found it. What? Okay. And this is going to be X squared. This is going to be X plus H. And that's basically what you're going to put it in. And now we're going to do... Whatever we need to do, we're going to take a shortcut number one and put that in there, and let's see what happens. Let me move this over a little bit. Of course, it's not going to cooperate, so I have to do everything. There we go. And that's going to give you the square root of x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 20 minus the square root of x squared plus 20. Probably, I don't know, it might be best to do it, rewrite it with a rational, rationalizing the numerator. That's also a uh, that's also a good, it says it right here. I didn't even see that. Rationalizing the what? Yeah, I didn't even see that till just now. So I started looking. I said, they got to give you something here because you can't do this one without. Yeah, because I was trying to cancel out. Yeah, that's why. So now that I read the directions, which men do not do very well, let me uh, redo it. Sorry about that. Let's start over and go the square root of x plus 20, square root of x squared plus 20 minus the square root, and we got to put that square root of x squared plus 20 over h. And this right here becomes square root of x plus h. So I'm going to rewrite this. Let me get a. I'm going to put a x plus h quantity squared plus 20. And now we're going to take the conjugate of this. And that's going to give us the square root of x plus h quantity squared plus 20 plus the square root of x squared plus 20. That's what I would do. And what is that going to do? That's going to give you... I'll be honest with you, I've never seen one like this before. Like I said, I'm going to run into these with this uh, new book. So that's going to be squared. A minus B times A plus B is equal to A squared minus what? B squared, Hubert. Thank you, class. All over H times the square root of x plus h quantity squared plus 20 plus the square root of x squared 
plus 20. Everybody with me? Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. I can tell you right now, this is not a test question. Um, and what's that going to do? What's this square going to do with this radical? It's going to take it out. X plus H, quantity squared, plus 20, minus, bracket, don't forget you got to distribute that negative, X squared plus 20, close bracket, all over H times the square root of X plus H, quantity squared, plus 20, um, plus the square root of H, is it X squared? X squared, sorry. X squared plus 20. Okay, now we'll make all this small and y'all be working on the numerator. Please work with me a little bit. Okay, that's going to give me x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 20 minus x squared minus 20 over h times the square root of x plus h quantity squared plus 20 plus the square root of x squared plus 20. And what happens to the x squared in the 20s? Square goes out, 20 goes out. And that's going to give you 2xh plus h squared over h times square root of x plus h quantity squared plus 20 plus the square root of x squared plus 20. Factor out of H, 2X plus H times H over H times X plus H quantity squared plus 20 plus the square root of X squared plus 20. And what happens to the H's? They cancel. And your final answer, because you can't cancel anymore, is 2x plus h over the square root of x plus h quantity squared plus 20 plus the square root of x squared plus 20. Okay. Somebody tell me, is that the answer that they're looking for? Now, it's a good homework question, but it's not a good test question. A lot of people say, why? Well, I'd only have to give you two or three of these on a test and you'd be out of time. So, I'm going to put three in there. <clears throat> Let's see if that's what they want, because I have no idea what they want. See what they got. Is that what they got? That's right. It's a miracle. All right. Does that answer your question, Miss Miss Yabi? You sent another question, didn't you? Or what were you asking me about? Um, the page number. The what? The page number oh, for the, the. Let me get back to the. Okay, what page number are you on? Twenty-two. <laughs> Twenty what? Twenty-two. 22 gives you. Uh, so right there. This okay, one hold on. Let me clear this out. Hold on just a second. 
Yeah, they got the same thing I got. Hold on. The very last part is like A, B, C, and D. Sorry, that's my daughter. Yeah, just ignore that because they're writing in a more complicated way. See, the, the A eventually comes out, and you've got the vertical shift, I mean, the horizontal shift right here. There's your horizontal shift. There's your vertical shift. I'm trying to do this with my finger and it's not working, so. And your A is out there as the orientation. Oh, so that extra one, that C is just... A, just like a constant? Up. Yeah, or like a constant. They're saying basically F of X. This is an interactive, you can actually you can actually take your interaction and you can move these. I don't think I can with this one because it's, yeah, it's not interactive. But what I can do is go over here and show you what they're actually trying to do. Hold on. So we should ignore the C, right? Not ignore it. Just go with what you were taught in college algebra. Um, you're not going to see, you're not going to see a lot of like I, oh, hold on just a second. Okay, it's not coming up. Still not coming up. They supposed to have fixed it, but they didn't. Okay. So is the function? Is, is the function is like okay. Say again. If the function is like x squared minus one, and there's like a negative one in front of the x squared part, how do we know yeah. that it's not a or c? Well, okay. Like, what did I tell y'all to do? All right. Give me, give me that. You got an example with you? Or you just made that up? I just made that up. Okay. Remember, I'm about ready to throw this pen across the daggum room. This guy right here will do everything for you. So give me give me any function. F of x is equal to what? What'd you say, Miss uh, Iabi? X squared minus one. Negative x squared minus one. Yeah, I said the negative, negative is 6 squared minus 1. Well, the first thing you do is set it equal to 0. Negative x squared plus 0x minus 1. Minus 1 is equal to 0. Negative x squared plus 0x plus blank is equal to 1 plus blank. All right, there's one way. What am I doing? I'm setting it up to do what? Complete the square. Complete the square. Complete the square is your best friend. Now, there's something else you could have done. You could have done f of x is equal to negative x squared minus 1. x squared is equal to negative 1. And you're going to find out that that don't work. Why? You can't You can't take the square root of anything and get a negative. So this right here tells you, whoa. I spell whoa. Right? <laughs> yeah, something like that. This right here tells you, okay, something's up with this guy. So then you go back to completing the square. So the completing the square will give you all your information. So then you go, okay, I got to factor out a negative here. So that's a negative, negative one. So what does that tell us? It tells us it's what? It's inverted. Okay, so that's going to give us x squared minus 0x, which doesn't matter, plus blank is equal to 1 plus negative 1 times blank. What's well, half of 0? I'll do that in my head. 0. 0 squared is 0. Negative 1, this is shortcut number 2, x minus 0, quantity squared, is equal to 1 plus 0 is 1. Divide by negative 1. Okay, what's our vertex? What's the opposite of negative 0? Zero? 0. What's the opposite of 1? Negative 1. So that's our vertex. Somebody tell me what my y-intercept is. 
Negative one. Oh my goodness. We're getting all kinds of weird things on this thing. So that's our y-intercept. So let's solve it and find our what? X-intercepts. Divide by negative one. Divide by negative one. Oh my gosh. X minus zero quantity squared is equal to what? What happens when you take and square root of negative one in your calculator? Uh, that's an imaginary number. You're gonna get a you're gonna get an I. You're gonna get an error or an error depending on where you're from. So that's gonna be X minus zero is equal to I. And X is equal to positive or negative I. So that tells you no X what? So now you sketch it. Why you sketch it? Because you're trying to do all this, you're reviewing all over all this, and so you take a handy dandy sketch. And we know right here, here is our magic. If you take this right here, f of x is equal to negative 1. X, I'm sorry, I'm trying to do two things at one time in my head. x minus 0, quantity squared, minus 1. What is that called? That's called the intercept form. What is a? What is X? I mean H. And what is K? You should be seeing that. Everybody see see what I'm doing here? You know how to do it, you just don't know when to do it. Remember, completing the square will help you no matter what. Zero, negative one. Unlike you were told, you know to be winged off that idiot box called a calculator, you need to use completing the square. Which way does it go? It opens downward. Does it cross the x-axis? No. Now we can do the domain and range. What's the domain? All real numbers. What's the range? Negative infinity to negative one. Increasing from zero, I'm sorry, yeah, to zero. Ne from negative infinity to zero, and what is it doing from zero to infinity? It's decreasing. So you got all of that. Domain, all real numbers. Range, negative infinity to what? Negative one. Uh, increasing, negative infinity to zero. Decreasing, zero to infinity. Does that help you out, Miss Yabi? Yes, sir. So even if there's um, you get an imaginary number, there's no x-intercepts. You can still graph that. Some of you may be seeing what's happening here. Some of you may be seeing, like Miss Miss Yabi. I'm glad you brought this question up because a lot of people see f of x is equal to negative x squared minus eight one, and they go. Oh my gosh, what do I do? Remember, completing the square will give you everything you need to know. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't do it on your calculator either. But, you know, you have to... What's it called? Think, yeah. You have to use that. It's called critical thinking. For some of you that won't go to, you ever go to a store and you get a cashier that can't make change, you can't spell mom backwards, it's one of those students that they told to use a calculator for 15 years. All right? Question. Remember I told you, if you could do completing the square, you can knock out two or three of those sections. You see, you see where I'm going with it? Hopefully. So, any questions on that one? And don't feel, don't feel bad. I get a lot of students. They're in their first semester of calculus, and they don't know how to do completing the square because they've been told, they've been told, you know, take that calculator everywhere you go.
trying to find the next section. Hold on. Okay, then we did that. Okay. Write down, find an inverse function. This is 1.4, uh, 1.3. 1.3. Finding the inverse function. Now remember, I'm going through the sections and I'm picking out what I would put on the test. All right? So far, you know, probably 80% of the test is going to be completed in square because it takes out a lot of that stuff. Factory, that's going to be on there. Uh, being able to use the shortcuts. Well, wait a minute. Shortcuts and factoring are on complete and square. Yeah. All right. So vertical and horizontal shifts, that's completing the square. The only thing that's not on completing the square is the inverse function and logarithms. So what is the inverse function? The first thing you do is go from writing and talking with the pinky up to going back to your redneck ways. What's the f of x mean? So change it to basic pre-algebra talk. Now, what do you do after you change it to pre-algebra? What do you do? You replace, you, you switch the x and the y. Now what? Solve for y. Minus 1, minus 1, x minus 1 is equal to 2y divided by 2, divided by 2, y is equal to x minus 1, divided by 2. Now you can rewrite, you can rewrite y if you want to hold your pinky up, x minus 1 over 2 is equal to f inverse of x. So, the inverse function of f of x is f inverse of x. I'm sorry, that's f prime. That's a derivative. Sorry, it's supposed to be negative 1. I stuck. Negative 1. Got it? Why did you switch x and y? And that's what you're supposed to do. Because you're finding the inverse. What an inverse is, is the, not the mirror image. You ever seen Pet Cemetery? Pet Cemetery. You take the animal back to the Pet Cemetery, you bury it, and it comes alive, right? No. It's still dead, but it's the, what, the demonic, okay? The inverse is, it looks like the function, but it goes the opposite what? Direction. Okay, so that's why you invert, that's why you do this right here. Because you're basically crisscrossing it. So if you was to graph these two functions, graph them on your calculator right quick. I'll pull up the handy dandy calculator. No, that ain't the calculator. Here's the calculator. Already had a, one of your questions in there. That, blame it. Uh, y is equal to. Let me just. I'll just clear it. Put it over. over. What was the first one? Two x plus one. And then the inverse. Well, we'll just graph that one. The inverse is going to be going the opposite direction, but it's going to be linear just like that one. Okay, so, so it's going to be, I don't know, something like this right here. Hold on. Oh, please work with me. It's going to be something like that. Okay. Wait, so would it be a negative? It should be negative. I thought we had a negative. We didn't have a negative. Yeah, no, one half. Okay, well, whatever it comes out to be, it should be, it should be a negative. 
first hand. Hell, I can't even get to it right now. Hold on. That's why I'm going up backwards. X minus 1, X. Okay, so it's not a negative. I'm sorry. You have to you have to graph it because I, I can't graph it in my head right now. Y is equal, and it's also Y is equal to X over 2. Okay, let's, let's look. X over 2, Y is equal to X over 2. Oh, me, even I've got too many things going on right now. X, Y is equal to X over 2. So I'm going to change it to a, let's change it to a dark line. And what is it? X minus what over, what is it? X minus 1 over 2. Is that what it is? So X... minus 1 divided by parentheses 2. I don't like that. Let me go up here and put second invert insert parentheses. I'm putting two sets of parentheses because no matter what your high school teacher told you, the calculator is not God. So you have to put parentheses around it. It does not. It does not think for itself. And okay, there it is. I'm sorry, I had it drawn the wrong way. All right. Does is it a symmetrical representation? Yes or no? Yes, it is a symmetrical representation, but it's not going in the same what direction? You see what I'm saying? So to answer your question, who asked that question? Why do you why do you do X and Y? Who asked that question? That's just the procedure because you're trying to find the alternative. You're switching the two. Okay? And if you look at the graph, here is your function. And you're trying to find, I guess you'd call it the what? Alternative identity. Uh, would that be a good word? You're trying to find the alternative identity. It's the same person, but it's totally opposite. You see what I'm saying? The same function, but it's the opposite. It's the inverse. Does that give you a good? Does that explain why we switch the x and the y? Yeah. It's just part of the procedure. I wish I could. I'm trying to think of an analogy, and I can't. The the, the Penn Cemetery thing is the only thing I can come up with right now. But you, you, the person is still the same person, but there's the, it's the it's the not alternative identity. It's just the evil person or the evil pet or whatever the case may be. Ah, shut up! I don't need to do any more of that. Okay. Here's the question that was sent to me. Uh, this is 1.237. Which one is this one? Well, it's, an, it's it looks like absolute value. All right. And it's going to look like this right here as soon as I get the... I'm kind of bouncing because I'm running out of time. So here's the function. It looks something like this. It looks like a W or W depending on where you're from. Now, how do you use... You use your calculator on this, okay? Now, you can find the domain. What's the domain? X plus 2 is equal to 0, because you can't have 0 in what? Denominator. Denominator. So X cannot equal negative 2. Negative two. So all real numbers except X cannot equal negative 2. So you're going to have some kind of vertical asymptote at negative 2. And I think that's what this is. That's negative 2 right there. So that would be Applying the limit theory at that point. Say again. That would be applying the limit theory at that point on both sides. No, we're not. We're not doing that yet. Not doing it yet. It, you, you, you're getting there, but we're not. We're not ready to do the limit yet. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna put a dotted line right here. This thing does not like to draw dotted lines. It starts going crazy. At negative two, you've got some kind of something quirky going on at negative two. Just, just let's just you leave it at that. Now, what are these two guys called? Well, what's the bottom of the bowl called? It's the minimum. So you got two minimums going on here. Why is it not a maximum? 
because the maximum is a mountaintop. This is a what? A valley, Hubert. Yes, y'all are supposed to take that mountaintop and go with the opposite of the mountaintop. What's the opposite of the mountaintop? The valley. Thank you for interaction. I appreciate that, class. All right? So these are men's. So they're going to be looking for the men somewhere. They're also going to be looking for the x-intercepts. You can find all that with your calculator on these complex functions. Okay? Now this is something you should have been shown with your calculator. Okay? You shouldn't name it or have a little bed beside your bed and take it to the bathroom with you. You don't need to do all that. But you do need to be able to utilize the calculator. Now I've got to type it back in. So let me type it back in. Y is equal to... I don't forgot what the function was. Absolute value, so you got to hit math. And number, and absolute value. And then parenthesis, and then x squared minus 1, close parenthesis, divided by open parenthesis, x plus 2. So everybody type that in your calculator. Why is it not? Okay, is it still? <sighs> Hold on a minute. There's nothing worse than working on a calculator on the screen. X plus what? 2? Is it X plus 2? Close parentheses. I thought I was hitting delete and getting rid of all the other stuff. Delete, Why is it? Uh, it, it's like backspace. It's not like delete on the keyboard. Well, it should be. There. Okay, I got rid of all that. Put parentheses back in there. Okay, let me clear this. Okay, and hit graph. That's not right. That doesn't look right. That was a problem I was having, and the graph that they gave was like you couldn't get it to show you anything. Yeah, that's not what I had. It, I had it right a while ago when I pulled it up. Something's not right. Let me go back to y is equal. Well, it looks right. That's not the same one that I pulled up a while ago. Okay. Well, negative two. You see something quirky's going on there. I guess I don't have it zoomed out enough. Let me zoom it out. Okay, there's your V. You still see the V, okay, or the W, except that in the middle, zoom in. And you can play with the window, and you can play however you want to play with it. I don't care. But at negative two, you see at negative two, something's going on, all right? At negative two, you've got a vertical asymptote. So let's look at the x-intercept. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to go down. I'm going to blow up the x-intercept because it's not crossing here. It may be crossing down here. So I'm going to go to zoom box, and I'm going to set a box around that x right around here. Now you do how you want to. I don't care if you, I don't use the window feature. I don't use it. If you use it, knock yourself out. Okay? Looks like to me it may be crossing there. It may be crossing over here. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. This is just a calculator drill on your calculator is all this is, this, this question. All right, I'm going to blow this whole area up right here. Zoom, box. I'm going to put the left-hand corner right in there. And I'm going to put the right-hand corner right over here where it looks like it's going up. Right about there. Everybody with me? It looks like I'm crossing there. It looks like I'm crossing here. So there's the W I was talking about. It's just spread out a little bit. So now I want to hit second, calculate. And I'm going to hit... Uh, you can do zero if you want to. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say left bound. Left bound and right bound, it just narrows the search down for the, 
for the uh, calculator. You don't have to put them, but it kind of narrows the search down. And there is your X intercept. Well, let me put to the left, right about there. There's one X intercept. And the next intercept, second, calculate, zero. And you can also do min and max. You could do that if you wanted to. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to enter my left bound. I hope I'm helping somebody on this because I don't know what you've had as far as a calculator. If you haven't had much exposure to the calculator, that's not a bad thing. If you can twist, if you can... If you can twirl the calculator around on your finger like a basketball, that's not a good thing. Okay, but hopefully you can't do that. If you've named your calculator, that's sad. And there is the other. So you have two x-intercepts of 1 and negative 1. Everybody got that? Now what else did they ask for? There's the x-intercepts. The y-intercept, let's go look up the y-intercept. So go back to the calculator. This is just a calculator drill question. And you can go to the trace and get pretty close. But it looks like to me, yeah, you might have to, you might have to uh, get in there and pull it up a little bit. Or you can pull up the window. I'm not the window. What is it called? The... Uh, Hold on a second. Table set. Where's table? Second graph. There it is. Where is the y-intercept? 0.5 because 0 is x. So you could do that also. You could use the window or you can use the trace feature. I don't, do I care? No. I don't really care about whether you, it's good if you can use the calculator, but I'm not going to waste a test question on it. I'm going to test you on the, the mechanics more than I'm going to test you on the calculator. Does that help you, Is Miss Yabi? Did you send that one, or Miss? No, that, that was me. Miss Wilson, did you send that one? Yeah. Does that help you? Yeah. Did, did you have to? And I'm just asking you because you'll give me feedback. Did Did you forget how to use your calculator, or did you just yeah. not understand yeah, the question? Yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> what? I haven't used it in a long time. Well, good. That, that makes me feel better that I went over it for you. Okay, because that's what I want to do. Like I said before, squeaky door gets what? The grease. So I spent a little bit more time on it than I wanted to there. What time's class the over? The valleys and the peaks were what was confusing to me. Yeah. Mostly. Okay. And the function has a valley at or near. And the valley... The valley... I thought I just gave you the valley. Huh. Okay, I don't understand that part. Let me go back uh, to that's, the... That's not the wrong answer. That's the answer she put it. Oh, okay. All right. It should be. Okay. All right. No, she put in point two. That, yeah, that's the right answer. I don't understand where, she, yeah. where they're getting at. Not an <laughs> X out of the... Not an X out of the calculator. Hot dog it. Okay, let me go on. I want to go on and try to cover. What time's class though? 425 or 435? Yeah, 425. 425. Okay, I got a few more minutes. Okay, we went over one like that one, so I can get rid of that one. Okay, this is a good test question. I want you to write it down because I may not get through with it. This is the type of question I would ask you about functions. All right, I'll write it up there for, and you will do the first couple. So, Mr. I think Mr. Swords, I think you sent this one, didn't you? I think that's the one. Yeah, that's the one I sent. F of X is equal to cube root of X. G of X is equal to X squared minus 1. The first thing they ask of is F composed of G and then plug in a 3. So, I'm going to rewrite F with a big set of what? Parentheses. Okay, the third root of a big set of parentheses, x squared minus 1. There. That's all you can do. So that's f composed of g. So you can use that for this and that. Now, what am I going to do with that 3? 
I, plug it I into just the, did have oh. composed of G right there. There's the answer there. Okay. Now what are we going to do with that three? Plug and what? Cube root of three squared minus one. What's three squared? Nine, Nine minus one. Eight. Oh my lord. Cube root of eight is two. 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 So I think I just did this one and this one. That one you had to do first to do that. Now F composed of F. So I'm going to rewrite F with a big set of parentheses. And then I'm going to plug in what? F. The best thing to do with this is to turn it into rational exponents. Why? Because you can think of that this all day long, and that's like looking inside of a mirror with another mirror, and you start getting reflections of each other. Best thing to do is I'm going to change this into x to the one third, and this x to the what? I meant that to the one third. And what's one third times one third? X to the one ninth, Hubert. Yes, class. Now what do they want to do with that 8? Plug that 8 in. F composed of F of 8 is equal to 8 to the 1 ninth power. And that means exponent over what? Index means the ninth root of 8. <coughs> now what's G composed of F? G composed of F means I'm going to rewrite G with a big set of parentheses. Parentheses squared minus 1. And what am I going to plug into G? Cube root of X, which is X to the 1 third raised to the second power minus 1. What's 2 times 1 third? X to the 2 thirds minus 1 or what is that? Exponent over index, that's the third root of x squared minus 1. Now, why is that a good test question? That's a good test question because it shows you how to plug and chug for substitution or hold your pinky up, composition. Okay? It tells you how to evaluate. What does evaluate mean? Evaluate means you plug in a number and you get a solution. And then three, you've got your what? Rational exponents. Why is rational exponents important? Because in calculus, calculus and radicals don't mix. So what do you do whenever you get a radical in calculus? You rewrite it as a what? A rational exponent. So that's a good test question because of those three things. What time is class over? Okay. I just want to make sure. I'm going to have to wait and get to the other questions tomorrow. We covered a lot of ground today. You should be able to get through... 1.3. Okay. So let me get out of there. Let me get to the. Let me get to the. Uh, what do you call it? Attendance.